Good morning, good morning. How is everybody? Happy Thursday. <laughs> Good morning. It's not yet 9.15. I know. It's going to be early one this morning. I've got doctors. We got the doctors, Mr. Mason. Morning, Tracy. Hope you're well. Might only be in, me be me and you one, Dave. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, yeah, I've got doctors at 11. I've got my blood. So um, sing it then. Sing what? What, what do I sing? What do I sing? Good morning, good morning. Good morning from Nashville. Good morning, Stephanie, my lovely. Sending you loads of love across the water. I uh, hope you're well over there. Hope all's good. Um, happy birthday. Oh, I forgot. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Tracy. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> Oh, Lordy, Lordy. Hope you have a beautiful birthday, Tracy, and I hope Dave's spoilt you rotten. Good morning, Claire. How are you this morning? Hope you're well. Hope um, work's not too busy for you. You get a chance for a coffee this morning. Um, yeah, so, 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 so. Morning, Linda. Not work till 11. Oh, that's good. You can catch this morning's coffee chat. <laughs> Yes, my dear, all is well praying for good results at your doctor's visit. Oh, thank you, Stephanie. Um, it's all to do. I don't know whether I've got a bit of sleep happening or, um, because my snoring. Uh, I don't know if you've been watching on the last couple of mornings when we've been doing this morning chat. Uh, my snoring sounds like I'm like uh, I'm uh, flat. Well, I'm like a flapping fish because I jerk in bed and um, I snore like a hog. Um, <laughs> so. Uh, wow, that's not very nice of you, David. Uh, oh, that's good, Claire. Um, so, yeah, so it's sort of like I've got to go to the doctor for some bloods because I need to know whether there's any issues with the bloods. And also, um, I don't know whether they test through blood. But I don't know why sleep apnea is tested through blood. I don't know. I ain't got a clue. They just told me I've got to go for blood tests today and then uh, GP will phone me next week. Um, oh gosh, I rattle the doors and window panes when I... <laughs> I'm in your club, Stephanie. <laughs> I'm in your club, my lovely. Do you know? It's like, but it's the flapping. I've punched him in the face this morning. I was having a dream. Um, and I would, we've been watching Sons of Anarchy. And I had a dream. I was um, fighting in Sons of Anarchy. And uh, you know when it's a real dream? Well, John's laid next to me, next to me, I heard him, I heard, and I, <laughs> I heard him go, ow! <laughs> and I went, what's up? He went, you've just punched me in eye. I says, I have not. He says, Lindsay, he says, you've just punched me in eye. Well, I started laughing because, you know, in my dream, I saw myself punching somebody, but I didn't think it was John. <laughs> oh, look, it was only a soft punch. Um no, Weren't it a soft punch? No, you proper wet me in eye. It's got to be more a slap than a punch, no, it's though. Really a punch, it weighing up all. What? <laughs> now, do you know if he'd have done that to me, I would have, I would have come back. Yeah, you would. That's what I'm saying. Oh, oh, I'm laughing. Oh dear! You um, me. <laughs> you should, I can, do you know? How do you know what you're doing when you're asleep? You've got no idea. You know when you're asleep, yeah, of course. I you're was asleep. asleep. <laughs> <weren't you? laughs> oh, I asleep. feel for you, John. <laughs> we your face, we your eyes closed. That was <laughs> oh dear me, Lordy, Lordy. We are laughing with John, not at him. <laughs> he went not laugh. I went on fast asleep. Oh, bless me, we're fast asleep. Oh, well, well, we're both up now, so that's good. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> 
Oh, goodness. But on the other hand, uh, my weekly weigh-in, um, so as we all know, we, I started like the fasting come calorie counting uh, eating plan last week. Um, and I've got on scales this morning and I've lost half a stone in a week. So I'm really chuffed with that. Uh, morning, Gillian, my lovely. Uh, beautiful picture uh, you sent me, Doc, and uh, I'm glad your granddaughter come to see you. Uh, but yeah, no. So half a stone off in a week. I'm like, oh my god. Uh, so I must have needed to lose half a stone because it's not very, it's not very rare you lose half a stone in a week. But yes, yeah, so I'm feeling positive about that. So I'm back on it this morning. Uh, morning, Tanya, my lovely, sending your love across the waters. Uh, your poor man, that would have been a wake-up call. Well, he calls me a flapping fish, so it was like a, just a bit of retaliation. <laughs> but morning, Sam, my beautiful lady, and Billy no mates here on here. Oh, you on your own over on YouTube, David, is the only you on? Oh, <laughs> John will come on. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, he did say he was first. Yes, yes, it's first. Um, but yeah, morning, Antoinette. Hope oh, you're well, my love. Like, um, oh no. <laughs> but yeah, um, I think I even said something a bit gangster then. What did I say? Retaliation. He's in retaliation. <laughs> oh, goodness. Um, but yes, yeah, so yesterday we have to apologise for last night for no live last night. Um, yesterday morning I went to see one of my daughters and then we come back home and then I got a phone call to go back. Um, at the minute, um, severe anxiety, severe panic attacks. And um, yeah, so by the time we'd left her house and come back home, it was then... It was like six o'clock. We'd not had nothing to eat. So we got to have us tea and then we got stuff that we needed to do that we hadn't done in the daytime because I'd, uh, we, well, we'd both gone over and stayed with her. Um, so, yes, yeah, so I'm going back. I've got to wait while the doctor rings me. Uh, uh, well, doctor rings me while I go for my blood and then I head back over and uh, just sit with her while her other half finishes work. Um, but anxiety and panic attacks, aren't they horrendous? Um, and it's like she's having, it's like when she's having them, she's having one, but then there's like another, like little, not, they're not even little ones, I can't say little, but they're like other ones that just like start coming as one starts finishing, it starts coming again. So anybody that suffers with anxiety and panic attack, you know what I'm saying when it's like, it's that big build-up one. Um, she's doing okay, Antoinette. I just think it's just everything. I think everything... Um, I think, yeah, I just think that the, it's, it's, it's just, we all cope differently, don't we, with different stuff and um, coming out of lockdown, going back to work and leaving kids. She hadn't left kids for nearly a year and a half, well, two years with Fletcher and a year and a half with um, Arthur. And, you know, you it, it, it's, just, it's just stupid. Uh, I hope she's feeling a little better today. So I will, Claire, I will. Uh, thank you, Antoinette, for sharing. But yeah, I think anxiety plays a big part for a lot of people in life. And we all know. Thank you, Stephanie. Um, we all know that. I mean, I suffer with it myself and, I, I, and I'll put a pound to a penny. Nearly everybody in our chat will suffer with uh, anxiety or panic attacks at some point. Um, others more than others. More than others. Um, but yeah, it's, it's awful. So I'm hoping she's got a doctor's phone in her this morning. Um, so I'm hoping that um, they'll be able to advise her uh, a little better than what I can. Because even though you're a mom, you think you're saying the right things and you're not saying the right things, if that makes sense. Uh, they are horrendous. My I start sweating, it's getting them PSD kicks in, start screaming. I feel safe a couple of my arms. As soon as it walks out, it starts. Yeah. Um, but do you know, Sam, it's got to be horrendous. Um, and, you know, we all have different things that trigger anxiety. For for, for my daughter, um, she got diagnosed at 23 with type 1 diabetes. Um, didn't have a clue. Didn't have a clue. And then it took her all the time. She never really got, in, got on top of her bloods um, because it was such a big thing at that age. 
to just have come on. No, you best behave, Mr. Mason. I can still get you. <laughs> uh, so say my pawn has had them, and they're not. They're not nice at all, Tanya. They're not. Um, but yeah, she got diagnosed. So then, when she was twenty three, she got diagnosed. Then she got. Um, she didn't think she could. Get, she didn't think she'd be able to have children because of the diabetes, um, and because they, you've got to get your bloods down to certain. It's so complicated. Um, I'm going to trace it. Um, I'm. It's so complicated to um, to get your blood down to a certain level. But when you when you're diabetic and you get want to have a, to get pregnant, your blood levels of should go down to a uh, below a certain whatever it is. Um, those with diabetes will know what I'm talking about and they'll understand why I still don't understand it at all because it's so complicated and um a bsi well, i don't know anyway she got caught so she had to get in control of her blood which she did um and then as soon as she had fletcher <laughs> she then got um pregnant a lot, lot longer after with arthur so she had two so she's got a two-year-old and a one-year-old. Lucky my sons know when it comes on, I clench my fish shakes. So, see, that's the thing. Nobody's with her. She's on her own when they start. So it's difficult um, when she's having them. Because she's got kids, it makes her panic more. And, um, yeah, but I think at the minute, I think, I think the fear of dying for a lot of people is quite a raw... It's, it's quite a raw subject to talk about. And I think because of this lockdown and everything that's gone off over the last uh, year or so, with all with all the losses that we've suffered, um, whether it's people we know, people we don't know, um, your heart's gone out for a lot of people um, with, this, with, this, with this lockdown. And because it's been that intense, and I mean, media hype, I'm not saying the media, I, but the media's got to hype everything up that little bit more so people watch. And um, I think because of how it's, how it's come about and everything else, and because she's a hairdresser, um, having to go back into work to then come back home to babies and everything, and it's sort of like it's, the, the fear's real, used to have fear of dying. But now I'm not, as I know, who's waiting for me at the rainbow. Do you know, Sam, I think that's – you found your you found your link. You found your um, your anchor to stop that fear. And I think for some people, finding, finding an anchor um, isn't good. See, I don't know with Jordan um, whether this anxiety she's getting, the fear of dying comes from the diabetes, comes from – um, I lost my dad when I was 31. Jordan's well aware of uh, my dad uh, passing young. She's getting all these pains and symptoms and she's got carpal tunnel to top it off. So anybody who suffers with carpal tunnel knows how painful that is. So I think when the pains start, oh, it's, I just my heart, I just wish I could take all the anxiety for her. Um, and I'd rather myself suffer with the anxiety than have her going through that level, that intensity of the anxiety, especially at night when you need your sleep. Um, well, yeah, it's just, it's awful. So anybody that does suffer with anxiety or fears or anything, when you feel an attack coming on or you feel, message a friend, phone a friend, phone me, message me, um, probably message better to start with um, because then I don't know who you are um, and I'll answer my phone. Uh, but, yeah, um, get in touch with somebody. Don't sit and suffer it on your own because I think it's very easy to section ourselves away and think we can deal with something like that when really we need to be surrounded by others. Um, but mental health is such a serious thing. Um, yeah, carpal tunnel, I have it in both hands. I have a heart murmur too. Oh, Sam, that carpal tunnel, I mean, I've never experienced it, um, but it's like she's, it's like a wrist um, and it's like right down to her elbow. Um, and it's, I can't, she, I, 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 she, but it's not, she, it's shooting pains, but it's that intensity of pain. Uh, youngest son is in hospital, he's a broken ankle in two places. They've tried to realign it twice, but each time they gave him anaesthetic, he collapses. Uh, he's my middle son who came yesterday to decide to play football after the England match while well, intoxicated, I may add. And my middle son went to tackle him. 
uh, and that's why he's in hospital. They're going to tell him today if he needs to have an operation on it. I do grow and think they're little boys. Um, if they can't realign his ankle, um, I well, I shattered both my ankles uh, on one on my right leg. I shattered shattered both ankle bones, both sides of my ankle, um, and yeah. Just the two of us. Why, it was two on uh, YouTube, David. So you and somebody else popped on. Um, so, yes, I do feel his pain, uh, Gillian. Just let me know uh, how he gets on. Uh, yeah, his painful hand goes numb. I have to wear a, a wrist support so they fit me in for surgery. That's what uh, uh, Jordan's just uh, reordered some. She, she'd lost them and she hadn't been wearing them. Uh, carpal tunnel is horrible. It's my right wrist, but I had an operation. Now it's a lot better. Um, I'm gonna let I'll let her know that Linda that um, with operations and everything else. But she's just uh, yeah, it, it's just like one thing. And when you're dealing with kids and you're having to pick them up and your hands are bending and pushing them on swings and tech, it, it's just it's just crazy. Into how your hands um how your hands start. So I'm hoping that they can give us something, but they can't give medication. Because the medication is too high for her to take while she's with boys, so she has to suffer. And it's it's no good, is it, when anybody's suffering? So fingers crossed they'll get it sorted. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to pop across, back, pop, blah, blah, pop back across. Uh, morning, Laura, my lovely lady, sending love to you across the water. Um, so, yeah, well, the weather today. Um, oh, I've lost my book for today's update. Um, I don't know where I've put it. Do you? Can you see my book? Mm -hmm. Is that it on the table? I don't know what it looks like. It'll be under your hair. Is it? No. No. You might have to have a little look round. I had it yesterday. Um, thank you, Sam. Three now. Everyone is waking up. Oh, they're all waking up. <laughs> Oh, it's because they're not used to me coming on too early, are they? It's normally half past nine I'm on. Um, good morning, John, from Laura. Um, so, yeah, so the weather today is dry, bit of cloudy, a um, bit windy from what I can see from here, but it's going to be a good night. Um, we're all going to be live tonight. At the place where we should have been last night. Uh, morning, Shazzy, my love lad. Morning, uh, Mr. Jillian. I carpal tunnel too. I hope it's fine. It is painful, honey. Yeah, hand pain is nasty. I know you're suffering at minute, Tracy, aren't you? Um, but yeah, I will uh, let um, let her know. Um, are you going to get in the shower? Right. Who's ready? Who's ready for on this day in history? Don't forget, it's only just one. One little paragraph, and you have to excuse me because obviously I'm, with the dyslexic dyslexia, I read things as it sounds. So, the first of July, I think the first of July, and it's nineteen sixteen. Charlie May was terrified. A few days before the big push, he had written to his wife, "I do not want to die." The thought that I'm laughing because what we subject we've talked on. The thought that I may never see you or our darling baby again turns my bowels to water. By nightfall today in, 2000, in, in 1916, Charlie May lay dead on a battlefield like the, the 20,000 other men killed on that one day. He would never see his loved ones again. The first day of the Battle of the Somme was the bloodiest day in the history of the British Army. It was, almost an, it was also an almost complete failure. The plans, timetables, training and vast assembly of men and supplies had all failed to achieve any significant advance, let alone a breakthrough. Around 1.7 million shells had been fired at Germany positions. The plan on the 1st of July was for the infantry to occupy a smashed moonscape. Instead, the Germans survived the bombardment in deep shelters and slaughtered the British as they walked across no man's land. In one sector, 780 Newfoundlanders attacked and within 28 minutes, 80% were killed or wounded. Only 68 were fit for duty the following day. Further down the line, a PALS battalion of men from the same neighbourhood and workplaces in Sheffield were annihilated. 
Two years in the making, 10 minutes in the destroying, that was our history, said one survivor. The battleground on, res on re relentlessly becoming the biggest ever fought by the British Army. By its end in November, over 400,000 British and Commonwealth troops had been killed or wounded, 200,000 French and up to 500,000 Germans. The result of this industrialised slaughter was incomplete inconclusive. The British were able to learn valuable lessons that would help them eventually overcome the challenge of trench warfare, how to attack well dug in fixed positions and defeat Germany, but at an awful cost. Um, so yeah, Battle of the Somme. Um, and again, do you know, I didn't even realise the Battle of the Somme. This is how bad history is. I didn't even realise how the, the Battle of the Somme was actually done on the 1st of July. Did anybody else in chat or is it just me? Um, but, yeah, and, I mean, it, 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 these, uh, these history things I'm just finding just so um, eye-opening because it's like things. It was also Princess Diana, Diana's birthday. To, were it really, Tracy? Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know it was Diana's birthday today. Uh, oh, there'd be a big thing on um, media then, won't they, today with uh, Princess Diana? Um, there'll be a lot of tributes, I would have thought. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. Do you know, um, I love history, but I do find history is very sad um, for everybody uh, around the world. We've all got our own histories, haven't we? That's, uh, whether we agree or don't agree, um, the loss is just uh, too great. Um, but yes, on a happier note, then we are out tonight. Uh, Fee, 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 stop it. Um, we are out on. We are out tonight. It will be at the same location as we should have been last night. Um, Claire will be joining us. Tracy, she would have been sixty. Wow. Wow, I didn't realise she'd be sixty as well. Do you know me? You'd see, this is it. I only, I only know what I know. <laughs> you only know what you know, don't you? Um, don't you? Do you know, Tracy? Do you know my coffee's going cold? Um, so oh, cold coffee. Um, yeah, so we are going to be out uh, later tonight. Um, I will let everybody know how uh, we get on. John's gone in shower. Shall I go and start running cold dance? <laughs> Shall I run tap? Have you ever done that? Where do you love doing that when somebody's in shower and you just go in the kitchen and just uh, tap on and you hear them shout, Why are you doing it? Take tap off. Who's put washing machine on? <laughs> Look like it only affect it only affects ours for the first two about the first minute of turning tap on and then it goes back to normal. Um because it's on a day sort of like on I don't know I, I don't know what it's on, but it doesn't affect it that long. Uh my great granddad died at the farm. Oh really, Tra wow. Wow, so your history your history is very um goes back. Um, see, I don't know much about I, I, the family history for, for me. Um, for all I know, my great granddad could have been there, Trace, and I wouldn't know because it was not a subject that my that my that my pop would have talked about war and um, anything to do with stuff like that, whether it was World War One, World War Two, balance. So it would just not. Um, I think it was just too painful for 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 people to talk about it and again as kids like I said I, my learning uh, stuff on history and stuff like that I ain't got a clue um, my brain didn't absorb it all so uh, yeah uh, Boris says stop picking on Fifi <laughs> <laughs> Miss Lickalot's laid there and, I, I, and I, can't, I can't do it you should go in and join John in the shower listen Laura if I were thin <laughs> if I were thin I would but the minute I'm not getting in that shower with him just yet. <laughs> but to be quite honest, Laura, he has to come and help me get showered anyway. So technically, <laughs> technically, um, we do sometimes have to shower together. Um, so yeah, <laughs> but uh, can't can't do it now, Laura. Anyway, because uh, Yolanda and Rob's in bed, and now I'll, I'll just wake him up. Um, uh, not live though. What do you mean, not live though? Yes, he did as soon as you said Charlie. Tracy did as soon as you. Tracy did as soon as you said Charlie. 
just as she would have been as yes, she would. Was, uh, I've missed some, I think. What, going to, to what, take camera into the shower? <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, you'd have a field day. A good bar, mate. I think anybody a good bar, mate. Um, no, I couldn't do that to him. I could do a lot of things, but that's it. I couldn't. I couldn't do that. <laughs> if I'd have added a little bit to a drink, I could have. Um, yeah. So, who's got plans for this week? Then, what we got planned in? What we're going to be doing? Um, I should have been meeting uh, my son today, and I've had to phone and cancel and tell him we can do tomorrow. Um, or I might have to do Sunday and take Mike's across, so see if Mike's is free Sunday and take him to see my mom, because um, she's not seen him and she was meant to be meeting us today. So uh, I don't know. I so I don't know what else there is to talk about. <laughs> oh, my new tarot's have come. My new tarot's have come, and uh, I'm going to be giving a reading this afternoon at two o'clock. Um, I've got a booking at two o'clock. And uh, it's going to be the first reading that I've given with my new cards. Um, so I can't uh, wait to um, wait to see it, wait to uh, give the reading. I'm totally in love with a beautiful side and out guy from Thailand. Oh, Stephanie. Do you know what? Do you know when you're in love, you just know it, don't you? And do you know, unfortunately, you know when we're not, you know that as well. Uh, beautiful inside and out do you know do you know that's one thing i can say, say with john um he is a, he is such a good person oh thanks shazzy my lovely i'll sort it out when i finish this um john is good he's so good um he, he's got he, he's got a soul deeper than the abyss oh stephanie um do you know, it's lovely to hear that. It's lovely to hear that. And I'm so glad you found somebody like that, Stephanie. Um, but, yeah, I've got to admit, John's, John's such a good person. Um, and I know I can take piss and I know I can torment life out of him. Um, but I'd be lost without him. I really would be lost without him. And not just on the... Um, just on every level, I would be lost without him because as much as we are like we are, um, yeah, but we've got that. We, the, our relationship is just uncanny. We, do you know, we, we argue like everybody else argues, like you do. And can you imagine me? I'm louder now when I'm arguing. Imagine me when I'm properly arguing. It's just shocking. Um, but yeah, it's, do you know, it, 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 it's, it's just crazy, isn't it? Just crazy. Uh, but he is. I've, 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 I have. Uh, I have got a good one with John, and uh, I'm glad everybody else has got their soulmates too. Um, glitches on YouTube again. Ooh, what we're glitching at? Do you know, Claire? I never believed in soulmates. Um, not really. Um, and I. <laughs> but it's funny because I believe that there's somebody out there for us all. Um, and I and. Yeah, for me, soulmates were for me, soulmates were different. But you know, I've found so many soulmates, not just with John, but with friends as well. Um, and it's like you've got a, it's like you've got a connection, and you can't explain that connection. Um, and it don't matter whether, like again, it's like those friends that you see, you don't see for like a year or six months or it could be five years. But then as soon as you're back in a room with them, it's just like you're picking up from the day you've left off. There's no awkwardness. There's no um, – the, it's just like a conversation that's just re-picked itself up. Um, don't you ever do, – do any of you get that when sometimes when you, when you go and uh, meet people um, and just – and see how they are? It's – yeah. It's – so strange, isn't it? How as our, our, our minds and his bodies um, work, and who we get, who we're attracted to, and who we're not attracted to. Still looking for my soulmate. He'll be out there, Shazze. Uh, there's somebody out there for everybody. Um, but you know what? Sometimes we need time. I always think we need to, and it's difficult because we all want to be with somebody, but if you love yourself. 
to me, we've got to love ourselves first and we've got to respect ourselves before we meet somebody and before that respect level comes. I don't know if I'm making sense, but I know what I'm trying to say, but I can't say it. It's all, um, I think you've got to love and respect yourself. And it's like when you meet somebody, you treat them the same way they want, you'd want to be treated. And it's just, it, it's just unbelievable. Yeah, indeed. I never believed until now. I had completely given up. And there he was. We have so many mutual friends in real life. It's almost unbelievable. We grew up less than 20 miles apart. And that's where me, so we met before. We just can't remember it. Do you know, I bet you did, Stephanie. I bet you did meet before, especially if you've got that many friends in connection. Um, maybe get some baby photos, not baby photos, but younger younger photos out and see whether you can recognise him in any photo. See if he ever got captured in any of your photos that you used to take when you were out and about. Because uh, you just might be stood there and he might just be in distance looking over your way. Uh, I feel really good. Maybe mine is my cats. Could be. Do you know, it could be some people do find that in, in, in the uh, animals, in the pets, in his fur babies. Uh, but like Stephanie says, don't ever give up. Uh, still looking for mine, but being on my own so long, so independent and setting my ways. Uh, I won't just need time now, yeah. Um, but yeah, Antoinette, 100% agree with you. Um, I think, you know, when you've been, when you live on your own, like, when you, I think it's worse when you live on your own and you meet somebody because you've got all your little little knickknacks and little traits that it's like a routine to do, and then when somebody comes in and invades that space, and it's like I need to move that I need to move that ornament so I can put my ornament there, and it's like no, that's where my ornament goes. Yours will have to go in the cupboard over there or uh, yours can go in that drawer, but then I've got the five drawers. Do you know what I mean? And it's just so, so, um, yeah. Uh, when it comes to telly or eating or going to bed, or uh, it's just a nightmare, isn't it? Uh, I'm like that. We are Shazzy soulmates. I'm like that. We are Shazzy's soulmates. Don't know why we just clicked. Um, yep, that's good, David. Uh, Chazzy's uh, Chazzy Dave's on uh, Tracy's on here and Dave's over on YouTube. Um, totally agree. Yeah, I think it's just crazy, isn't it? Um, but I think once you that independent that you the independency that you get from living alone, um, it also builds you up, it builds the character up of you're a stronger character than what you think. But then again, people in relationships, we're all stronger characters than what we think. And we can all deal with things that we never think we could deal with. We, we can, we can do that. But sometimes we can't deal with it alone. And that independence and that setting in setting your ways can sometimes be a hindrance because you either don't want to let people in or you don't want to put it on somebody else. Um, because you're that used to um, sorting everything out before. It's it, it, it's so strange. Um, to say with me, guys, I'm just going to end live and I'll be uh, two takes. 